everyone and welcome to Red United TV. It's your boy Ivorian Spice and welcome to the Catch Up Volume 17 guys. And as always and as usual, I have my two brothers beside me. Amuk, what are you saying today? A little bit excited about this particular show though. So, you know, you're in a good mood or not? I'm, I am in a good mood yeah. because I'm going to talk about the things I like talking about anyways. <laughs> <laughs> and James, what are you saying today bro? All good, back off three points, you know? Yes. Looking forward to the show as always. Of course, we did get the three points on the weekend against Everton, guys. A good win for us, of course. Of course, as you guys, if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and remember to share. And we have hit a thousand subscribers on the YouTube channel, yep. So, congratulations. Uh, thanks everyone, though, for letting that happen still. We exactly. Guys, so. This couldn't have happened without you guys mm -hmm. watching, you guys subscribing, of course, as always. Thank you very much. And of course, as you know, guys, as we do in the catch up, of course, it's always the popular opinion. So we discuss the popular opinion that's going on and surrounding Manchester United. So, of course, this week, we'll definitely be talking about the win against Everton. Also, to the situation with Oli's future, the Premier League roundup of the weekend, and also a couple of news regarding Paul Pogba, also the, the FA chairman resigning, and also Mason Greenwood's situation with the media. So, of course... We will start with the match against Everton, which was Everton 1, Manchester United 3. Manchester United bagging three points. And an outstanding day for Bruno Fernandes and also Fred as well. You have to give um, shouts and props credit. and credit to Fred because Fred was amazing, amazing in that match. He was everywhere. Vital. Forward passes, intercepting. So I'm still sometimes wondering what McTominay is doing. But it doesn't matter at the end of the day. But guys, we'll go straight to that match. You know, my personal opinion, of course, you know, it's so funny because it's, I'm 50-50 with the win, you know, because I'm deep down in my heart, guys, you can hate me, you can kill me, you can grill me. I wanted us to lose for the, for the, for the good purpose of, for Manchester United, for the, for the goodness of Manchester United to move on. You know, because I still feel like our manager isn't the right person, although we won, the second is pending, you know, because there is another, you know, um, Istanbul performance coming. There's another probably like a Brighton performance PSG. coming, a Crystal Palace performance coming. As always, although you have the PSG performances and all that, so the Everton performances, you do have the Crystal Palace and you got the Brighton type of performances. That that's in Oli. That's always going to be in Oli. So I still see him getting sat eventually. It's all about when you know. You know, it's just all about when. Okay, right, let's go straight to that match. Um, Amu, what was your feeling and opinion of that win? Um, to be honest with you, after the first goal, we conceded the first goal, and I was just like, oh, thank God. You know, you know, like, Oli, Oli out was trending out as soon as we conceded that first like, goal. I was, I was like, thinking. thank God. And I didn't allow me just to concede two more, at least lose by three. Like I did the last time, he was going to lose by four, but this time I think it's three anyway. So, but to be honest with you, from a fan perspective, um, I was really excited that we got the three point. Mm -hmm. Like, no matter how much we hate Oli or we dislike Oli, but it was really important that the team got the three point. Like how um, my man just said, um, Bruno and Fred, you cannot say thank you to these guys. Because without these two guys, I felt like we didn't really do that much. Not that we dominated the match, like totally dominated the match. No, we did not. It was a bit down in the second half. Second, I know. Yeah. Like, the, 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 like mid the second half, like they were honest. The one thing that always helps Oli <clears throat> is this last change that his second half changes, which actually I think like bring more spice and you know when you cook and jollof rice and you miss out some ingredient and yeah. you ask someone to taste the food, they say no, this missing, this missing, you gotta bring this. It's that's not authentic it's, enough. That's what I think Oli did against um, um Everton. Then few players that came in literally just changed the whole everything that we were going through. But yet still this mob this mob season. Why is the same team that comes in the second half can't start the game to give us like a oh, very good lead in the first half or sometime in the second half? Mm -hmm. Why do you have to wait to the 70th minute to see Pogba or these players, these players coming in to change the match first? But like I said, it was a very wonderful match that we won and I was really excited. Goodison Park is a place that we actually struggle. So for us to go there and do what we did, thumbs up to the guys. I won't say thumbs up only though, because for me it wasn't <laughs> only nothing. It's individual brilliance. <clears throat> Right, and Jax, what about you? When that first wet goal went in? <laughs> oh, mixed feelings. Obviously, as a United fan, you never want your team to lose. But at the same time, 
most of the questions before the game was all about Oli's job, how is he feeling, etc. So I was feeling, listen, one nil down, at least Oli can go. <laughs> it's a good trade off. True. But the boys reacted very well in the first half. I was actually surprised. Um, it looks like they didn't want him to get sacked. They reacted very quickly. They scored straight away, and we did dominate the first half. Um, the second half, I think Oli sent the boys out to just make sure, do not lose me my job. <clears throat> do not concede yet another goal. Just don't do it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I can say that's true, though, because defensively, they were a little bit brilliant, but just control, like, you know, you winning 2-1 mm -hmm. already, yeah. but you scared that you might concede Another goal that makes it 2 2. I felt like. We should we, have gone on attack. Yeah, yeah, but I understand what you're saying though. The players probably felt like, do you know what? We can hold on to this 2 1 nil, uh, 2 1 lead and keep Oli in. But it was a good one though. My, yeah. my question is, is do you honestly think that they were playing for him at that, or they just done it because of their pride and evil that they're good players? and they can win the game without a manager because sometimes it's like that. It's because I told you before, I, it is Oli going to freestyle because Oli True. is always going to freestyle in every single match. He always tells his boys, oh, just go out there, guys, enjoy yourself, have fun, do what you have to do, you know, you know, because there's no strategy, there's no tactics. No, I could agree with you. Most though. of the game. I'm actually thinking about it. I'm not too sure if they actually was playing for him or they were playing for themselves. We would never really know the true answer, but from the first half, that reaction, gave me some sort of inkling that they did not want to lose this game because for me it doesn't look like they've been playing for well, themselves well Bruno didn't want to win this game all I, mean, I see was, game, so I was playing against mm -hmm. K to get trashed mm -hmm. on social media mm -hmm. so they have to put on the A game and make sure they win that match yeah. they would get that abuse straight they away they will get it because they've been getting it <laughs> they've been getting it but guys let's let's talk about Bruno Fernandes <laughs> yeah. what a guy what a guy to, top, to, player. top player top player top player to just carry us he carried us I believe without him um, Oli would have got sacked of course but he kept Oli in his job again yeah, 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 yeah. do you want me do you want me to tell you us tax that when I found that Manchester United fan I was like what do you know um, um, Bruno played 32 games and he's been involved in 31 goals and assists mm -hmm. for the club and when I found that that gives the goodest thing uh, gives ever and I was like what so for me, and I actually ask this question, if we didn't have Bruno in this team, because mm. in terms of mentality, like winning mentality, like it hurts me to say this, but I've seen more passion for the badge coming from Bruno than anyone else that, re that rocking the Manchester team uh, at, at, at this point in time. Absolutely. Like, and it's just sad to see someone that he just had all these wonderful, amazing things about club and really was excited to join this club and came in there just to prove himself like, you know what, I've had all this amazing stuff about this club, but actually what I'm saying inside this club is not what I've had and you just need, you know, let me take leadership. And just because that one instinct, Bruno always going to love you though, just know this. Fantastic performance by Bruno Fernandes, you know, the two goals and the assist, the wonderful assist to Cavani to score his first goal. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I was, was pleased for Cavani to score his first goal. Like, you so know, first. you know it. As soon as that, he made the pass, I said, that's a goal. Mm -hmm. I knew it. But no. also, that's what we have to speak about Fred. Oh, Fred everywhere. Why does McTominay play? We don't need both of them. We've been saying this. I yeah. think Fred's are good enough to play by himself in that little role that he has. Sure. Scott can come in and replace him when needed be. But Fred's been one of our best players this season. Yeah, as well. He's been one of our best players. Very tenacious, very energetic in the midfield. He's been good. Underrated he is, you know. I don't I don't see any of these pundits raving up about him. Yeah. They don't, they don't. They probably rave about McTominay or something like it's that. It's just me and G actually and Or Marcus Rashford, even though he's been playing inconsistently dead for for good for since he's come back. <laughs> no, but majority of Manchester fans really been saying negative things about Fred. Why did we sign him that much? 50 million, this that ain't we ain't seen none. But if you remember, me and you have always gave him thumbs up because we watch how he plays. We seen the things that he does. How he one thing I like about Fred that I mentioned to you, like I think probably a year ago before when we just had him, is like the track back and how he's always behind the ball. No matter if it's Manchester controlling the game or the opposition, Fred is just behind the ball. And if you go meet for a place like that, there is a better chance of you winning balls a lot. Of course, of course. We and we saw that against Everton. Exactly so. But guys, let's talk. Let's say something. I've got something in my mind to say. 
Why is it that whenever Luke Shaw starts playing consistently well and starts doing some amazing assists on herself, he gets injured straight away? I've, I've actually noticed that every time Luke Shaw looks like, wow, this guy's in form. He's coming. The old Luke Shaw's coming back. The guy gets injured, pulls a hamstring. It's like whenever he puts 110 percent, hamstring just deplates, and that's it. Done. Broken down. Boom. Done. Boom. What's going on with him? Do you know what? Thank God we have talent. Yeah, thank God. Sure, he offers a glimpse of brilliance, and then a lot of the time he's just injured. an average player and he's always injured. So it's good for us to have two good left backs. Sure, he plays well, but I would even prefer Brandon Williams. I know <laughs> he can play on the right, but Sure for me is not he's not too great. To you would prefer Brandon Williams over Sure? One million percent. Why is that? Brandon's a very good player. Um, going forward, he's better. Yeah, defensively. He's also good. He's played well but against the suspect teams. defensively. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. See, going forward, he might be. He might have that little edge. I remember, I remember a game against City where he played, yeah. and he played very yeah, well. Yeah, he I has it in him. He's only nineteen years old. Yeah, you know. So I think Williams would be better than Shaw. With Tellers, we're all right because Shaw's always injured. Tellers is um, according to I was obviously just recently put FIFA. And according to FIFA, of course, Tellers is overall is 84. Yeah. And um, Shaw is 81. I had no, so Tellers is the, far better no, player. My one now got Shane 81, Shaw is 79. Oh, no, the one I've updated recently well, is, is 81. Update. Recent update. Maybe, maybe it's, you know, FIFA does with the weekly update, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Tellers more technically gifted, better technically gifted. I used to more well. agile on the ball. Uh, this is for me playing the FIFA, you know. This is me. My FIFA team changed. He was even Anthony Carimo. He's Tellers. even bagged a couple of goals. goals. Mm -hmm. He scored goals. And he's fast too. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's quick. He's fast. So as you see, even us playing virtual games, <laughs> we've been seeing. <laughs> it's just funny, like. Us playing virtual games, we've seen the little changes, difference that we've made with the new Manchester team. I ain't gonna lie to people. I believe Manchester United on FIFA 21 is actually dope. We got a strong team. They're dope, but they don't have a right side of the team. Right side. Right. Like, we don't. The right side is very weak on the FIFA mm -hmm. team. Mm -hmm. On on the FIFA. I've, I I I'm, I'm I know. That's my team right now for manager mode. And you got the players like well, Greenwood is at 78 so far. You got. James, <laughs> 77. We've got Pleshu's on his 71. We don't have a right side in midfield. But our, our, our midfield is stacked. Top notch. Top so notch. Stacked. Stacked. Yeah. Stacked. Stacked. Forward as well. Yeah, forward is fine. Forward is fine. Cavani just, just makes it. Cavani like gave him the extra uh, just gravy. That's the extra um, seasoning. Cavani just made that possible. Like, have a Cavani in my team? I don't know if it's like a dream comes true, though. I just say the fact that it's too old to come to United. As always, we sometimes do do transfers 2008, yeah. you know, no, like, like Abramovich, yeah. only we had him five, six, seven years ago. The, this German legend. Bastian Schweinsteiger that mm -hmm. came a bit three, late. Four years late. Yeah. Four years late. A lot of things we do sometimes late. But right, let's, let's go straight back into that match again. To, at the end of the match, Oli got on socials, and what's it called, rant. <laughs> <laughs> no. I've never seen a half-hearted rant in my whole entire life. I never seen a rap where someone couldn't even say it with their chest. The guy was like, "Yeah, the, fi the fixtures, the bloody fixtures, uh, yeah, 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 they just set us to fail." I was thinking, "Yo, but say with your chest, say with it. If you're gonna, rip. that's how you know this guy's got no balls in the change room. He's not used to having a goal. Even from that rap, I can tell. It's a nice right, this, guy. Is, this, this ain't you. This only oh, this ain't you. You're just frustrated because your job was on the line." Most well, George United had to, to go. Yeah. The press was on you. Yeah. The punish were on you. And got, obviously, because you won, you really want to tell them, F you guys. Like, <laughs> no, that's true, though. Yeah. But all of a sudden, he started straight. Ah, like, he stressed, you know, for him to have that a go about the fixtures. The fixture congestion that we all knew about since COVID. And it's, yeah, it's a bit funny because last season we was playing Thursdays, mm -hmm. UEFA Cup, Sunday, Monday, Monday Thursday. Sunday we again. Doing it. Yeah, yeah so three games in a week. For you to complain now, for me, highlights a pivotal moment in Oli's career. This was the time where he knew he was going to get sacked if he lost. <laughs> the fact that they won, he came out and just released himself <laughs> to the audience. You to know? be honest with you, but uh, I think that was BS. <laughs> that was actually, actually, actually messaged him saying, I saw the film there, Klopp saying the same thing. My point I'm trying to make in this particular situation is this. If the world itself going through changes, 
that we all accept in changes that we never used to accept. I saw UK doing demonstrating for three days in a row just because of one month lockdown, right? We got Corona just affecting everything. Football managers or players or owners should also accept the fact that if the world is changed, that we're going through a little bit of revolvement around the world, whatever, I don't know what this is, this Corona stuff. Why can't you accept it and whatever you got to deal with, deal with it. Because football is the thing that I believe managers in the team themselves go through hell. You've got team travelling on the bus for probably five hours and playing the next good day. You know what I mean? We've seen that. So at the end of the day, why are you complaining, Oli? You should have known that it is going to get packed because the Premier League season started a little bit late because of preparation and that. So then you think they was going to pack the matches? Like, this is something you should have... Like, it bugs me to say this, but if you accept a role, you better do what you accepted. Anything that comes on top of that, that don't complain. And Oli, we didn't really want to hear you complain about the games you've been playing or whatever, you should be happy that your team actually won because we don't want to see you. Because I said to someone, in my perception, Oli, you are the most, for me, you are the least <laughs> um, manager in the Premier League. I think oh, every other manager in the Premier League, one of one the shittiest, one of the shittiest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every other man, uh, uh, manager in the Premier League actually got a little bit of a better CV than you. So in my opinion, I think I can put them better than you. For me, you should be, not, you should be managing the Premier League team. But that's just me, in my opinion. I hope Manchester fans might think otherwise. But Oli, stop complaining and do the thing. And Jake, what are you thinking about that, that cup round? Do you know what? There are so many other things for Oli to have expressed that, that anger at. True. Poor performances. The position we are in the table. True. The position uh, play, uh, the game against Istanbul. There's so many different ways where he could express himself. So to speak about the fixture, I don't really understand it. Yeah, to be honest with you, boy, sure, I don't really injured. But sure is always injured. So I don't get it. Mm. Always play Thursday, Sunday. I understand and I agree to an extent that City and Liverpool both played on Tuesday, I believe. So they could have played on Saturday whilst we played on Sunday. But that's not an excuse we really want to hear right now. We just need to get more points on the board and focus on the positive stuff on you don't need to complain about for now. And also, if you want to be angry, be angry for the right reasons. Yeah, be angry at you yourself, man, for not being good enough. We you got, know what I mean? We've got a global pandemic that's going on, Oli. <laughs> and even you, the same league that we're playing started a little bit late because of Corona. So I believe, as humans, that's something that is not, it's not rocket science. We all just got to understand that this situation and what we do when situation comes up, find ways to mend it. Guys, do let us know what you thought about Oli's rant. Do let us know what you thought about the match against Everton. Who was your manager match as well? Who was your donkey to match? Do you think it was lucky? Um, what your opinion was on Fred and also Bruno? And well, let's let's talk about Oli a bit more. Um, he won that game, of course. What does this mean for his future at Manchester United? Does it mean he will still get sacked or he won't get sacked? Would Ed sack him or not? Because Ed was there. Do you know who else was there? Who? Um, who was our previous CEO? Uh, our previous CEO was uh, Mr. David Gill. So David, David Gill was David also Gilles. there and he's a member of the board. Mm -hmm. So you had two mm -hmm. board, you had a CEO and a board member watching that game. So to me, it's, it's, it's said to me that they are really considering changes. Mm -hmm. To have two people there, two people of importance in the club there to watch him and see what happened. Because of course, Seeing um, Woodward there don't, make, don't mean nothing to me because he doesn't know nothing about football. But to see David Gill yeah, there makes, makes a difference. Makes you start thinking what's going on. What's going mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's Bobby Charlton, he's ill, couldn't mm -hmm. be there. But if he was there, it would be peak as well. I think it's a bit too late. I feel like um, we said this last week. Yeah. Oli will not get sacked unless we start losing three, four, five on the bounce. Again, this win saved him once again. <laughs> I still feel like United are very reactive. Mm -hmm. We should be proactive and we should sack him regardless of the Everton result. Exactly. But they're going to allow him to keep his job yeah. and see what he does after the international break. And for me, it's unfortunately, it's not good enough. That's, that's what... But just been lined up. Just sort it out. Just let's do this. That's what really annoys me, James, is the fact that we are a reactive club and not a proactive club, you know? Like, you can... Just... There was red flags over on Oli this whole entire season. Like there's red flags, there's so many red flags to fact the fact that you can actually sack him. You can call him upstairs and say, boss, 
I know you've been here for two years. You've had 100 games. <laughs> We're now sitting 15th or 14th in the league. Or in, you know. This is not what I signed you up for. Mm -hmm. Take a severance, severance package and hit your P45. Good luck in the, in, in the future, isn't it? That's what you have to say to him. You know, that's it. Why does Edward Woodward take so long why to break stressing? up with somebody? Why are we stressing ourselves? I would like to know, Ed, when it came to breaking up any of your ex-girlfriends, did you take this wrong? Yeah? Because you were taking long to break up Oli. Or was you the guy that prefers to get dumped instead of dumping people? <laughs> I just want to know because there's people like that that say, oh, I don't like dumping people. I prefer to get dumped. Because <laughs> yeah? then, then I can get out of the situation. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, what, I mean, what do you think? What do you think of Oli's future? I think Oli's future, Oli haven't got a future in Manchester United. But like we've all been saying, even when he said it started, I said Oli say yes to that guy. Oli do you say is yes to where, but. but um, and good at sales and stuff, but fair enough, that's people. I see plenty of Manchester fans and Shishimi getting excited. We should get excited. We got a free point. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not taking that away from no one, but if we can ask ourselves questions, and this a deja vu of what we've been going through for the past how many years? 100 like, games? Yeah. yeah. Like, lose a few games, only get pressured, and all of a sudden, just one win, yeah. and a drop that backs the win up the following week, all is in. So international break came at a good time for him as well, isn't it? And a bit of a breather for him. I still believe Manchester as a fan, I still believe Manchester United should just take a drastic measure and just sack all it because it is international break. Like it won't be that really bad because we done it to Mourinho when we lost 3 1 against Liverpool. Mourinho got sacked before the international break or during the international break. So I felt like it's Manchester should do the same thing because we've had a rough start. We've played seven games or six games and we still stay at seven. seven. We still stay at 14. Seven, that's 21 points. And we just got 10 out of 21. Not good enough. Not great. Not good enough. And 21 Savage won't be happy with like, us right now. So at the end of the day, <laughs> now if she playing Savage mode still, just get us all in that <laughs> Savage mode. But at the end of the day, Oli... Like how, when you said last week, you want to be proven wrong, right? But it's like every time you see you want to be proven wrong, things just happen to make sure I was right. <laughs> Only prove us wrong, please. Please do. I've been saying it since you got to United. And every time that something happens, I keep saying I'm right. Prove me wrong. Prove the other guys wrong as well. We care for you, Oli. We care for the club. We don't want to see nothing wrong happen to you, but United need to do better. Definitely, definitely, guys. And let's move it on straight to the next topic. So guys, as you know, it's International Week and it wouldn't be International Week without any news from or transfer gossips from regarding Paul Pogba, of course. Yes, in the news today, Paul Pogba has been throughout the week with Didier Deschamps um, saying that he doesn't feel that the player himself will be ha is happy with the current situation of not being able to play as much matches as you want. And you all know that Pogba is happy when he plays football, he said it himself, you know. And also the fact that the player's been playing out of position, of course, nobody would be happy in the situation. Also, um, highlighting the fact that he has gone through, he's had had COVID, so he's had like a slow start to the season, which I would read quote to quote, which I will do that right now. You can unlock your phone and I will read the quote for you guys. So, he did say, I know Paul well, and he knows the squad well. Deschamps explained in the press conference via France Football, of course. He finds himself in a situation with his club and he cannot be happy about. Neither in the terms of his playing time nor his position. He's in a difficult period. He had a string of injuries and COVID-19 and also affected him adversely. He needs to rediscover his rhythm. And of course, English press will probably think, as always, always want to attack a brother. Oh, Papa wants to leave. Blah, 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 blah. He's not happy. He told his coach that he's not happy. Any player won't be happy if they're not playing, unless you're Jesse Lingard, Andres Pereira, one <laughs> matter, you know, only got a social, your fan be on the bench, you know? Any that's, top player that's it with me. That's it with won't me. be happy to play anyway. So the, 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 the shop is speaking some facts. It's not like the shop had a word with him. You, you should know yourself. It's just common, 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 sense. Com, common sense. You're not playing, you won't be happy. And like I said, unless you're only going to social, who's ridden the bench his whole career, all time career at Manchester United. You know, I keep saying this, Jax, as much as you, we call him a legend, you know, so he never truly wanted to test himself. 
it's not a legend. He's doing his own thing. He's not a legend to me. Nah, he's a legend. He's a legend. He's a legend. That's what I said. To me, it's not a legend. I'm look. He's a legend. You know why he's a legend? He he accidentally sticked his leg down. And it hit the ball, hit him. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm we, joking. We he's remember, a legend. We could remember him. If that's if he's telling, if he tell it, I mean, Oli is a legend. I could say Van Basten is a legend. Because Van Basten scored the most value to go for United in one of the Premier League. Yeah. But I don't see Van Basten as a legend in United. Yeah, you could say that. But let's move straight up to that, to that, to that Paul um, Deschamps mm-hmm. um, with, with Pogba. What do you think about that? I just think Deschamps is 120% right. The same way I believe Oli went on. on on the media the other day having a run about the pack schedules. Deschamps, that's his player. He's been playing for Deschamps for a lot knows how many years. Like since probably busting the scene. Yeah. He gave him his like, he gave like you know what I mean? So he know the same way we say um guy Southgate knows the English players. We could say the same thing about Deschamps. He knows Pogba. He probably saw him in training think like there's something wrong with this kid. I'll probably have a one to one chat with him and I would tell someone who looked after me since mm. I was a kid, I actually trust. I would speak to them in person, tell them how I felt. And I believe that's what Papa done. It, not that he wants to leave United. We all want things to change at United. I think he's trying for the same thing. But, like I said, when you, when you, if you're Papa and stuff like this comes up in the media, you're definitely going to get it. People refuse to understand. Like he's mentioned in what you read had COVID. Do you know what that means to people that have been, uh, been COVID patient? Do you know what happens when you get the illness itself? So for him to come back and do what he does, from the two cup of ball, we appreciate you being our player, we appreciate everything you do, and we hope we can get to a common ground that everyone understands you better, so we can get the best out of you, and we want to see you back in that rhythm. And James, what did you think about that? Um, it was great to hear from Bisham, especially after the media stuff that came out a couple of weeks ago, the nonsense that came out. Um, and what you're saying is spot on, and I think we all agree. True. He's had a string of injuries. COVID, stop-start uh, season for Pogba, he hasn't started too many games. Of course he's not going to be on top of his form. Um, we expect more from Pogba. I feel like once he gets more match minutes under his belt, we will see a bit more of him, but that's down to Oli to use him properly, you know? Oh, Not just coming job. off the bench. Oli don't actually utilise his players. <laughs> just go see it. Yeah, you guys are saying? Um, yeah, so I feel like Pogba, we need to see more from you. No, no, you're just funny. <laughs> He's funny, isn't he? He's just straight. <laughs> you know what? Oli don't have to utilise his players. <laughs> No, no, no. He no, has to no. drop it. He has to drop he it. I'm part, bro. This is joke. This is real. <laughs> no, this is real. Like, this guy don't rate him, bro. <laughs> I ain't never met him. You don't rate him. Never rate him. I like to cut you off, Jack. Sorry. But as you say, sorry. 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 <laughs> I just had to mention the obvious. Blooper <laughs> moment. So, um, <laughs> yeah, probably you need to stay fit. Hopefully, Oli, you can utilise the player and at least not do things backwards by putting him on in the last 20. Let him start an hour. And then build it from there. The same with Cavani. Stop putting on for 20 minutes. Let him start an hour. And build it from there. But um, Pogba, the one thing I would say, we need a wee bit more effort from you. Especially yeah. when it comes back to come the defensive side of the work. If we're not going to play as a number 10, unfortunately, you just need to adapt your game. And just go on the treadmill. Do whatever you need to do. And just up your fitness. True. But I Definitely. totally agree with Deshaun. Us United fans have seen that from the start of the season, you know? Yeah, true. Also, guys, you have Mason Greenwood as well. Mm-hmm. Pagans, haters from the press as well, attacking the young boy, saying stuff like um, he's having altercations with Bruno and Bruno wasn't happy with his work effort in training, um, the, how he's not training properly. Of course, all bullshit news, considering the fact that the boy himself has lost his friend, the Man City player that committed suicide after being released. As um, a young man, he's, he's a young man, he's a young black boy trying to make his way in the game, of course. The media, of course, once they, are, as always, they build you up just to break you and take Damn. you down, as always. And the fact that he hasn't really done anything wrong. He hasn't really done anything wrong apart from what? Trying to get booty on Iceland. <laughs> Alright, there's nothing wrong with that. That's normal for a young kid, like. I was trying to get booty when I was not meant to get booty. You know what I mean? My parents didn't want me to get some booty, but... And he's like, you're a young guy at the end of the day, like, you need to allow him. Press, the press are just sick. They make me sick as well, just attacking the young black boy that's just trying to sh- 
make his way in the uh, in the industry. Just and he's and he's young. He's allowed to learn. You know, you let other players learn like Jack Grealish, um, Jack Wilshere, David Beckham, Stephen Gerrard having a fist fight in the pub, and his friends taking the bait for it and going to prison for, for it. it. You know, also so you let and that. What side. happened when he when that, that sorry to cut you off? What happened to Gerrard's friend? Uh, Jira, when he from went to prison that time, went straight to the World Cup. Yeah. He went straight to the World Cup. Yeah. And I believe he captained England as well. Yeah, John Terry's mother stealing John Terry, doing his best friend's woman. Also, so, but you forget about that, you know, but I'm going to remind you. But still, I just feel like Mason Green was just being fairly untreated. True. Just, just because of, I truly believe it's just because of the colour of his skin, because... Phil Foden, as always, as I said before, he got caught with Mason Greenwood, but he's the one with the baby mum and child who's in the worst situation than Mason Greenwood. But you hear nothing from the press regarding Phil Foden ever since. In fact, Phil Foden has even started some games at Man City. I believe Mason Greenwood has been punished by Manchester yeah, United. True, they did punish him. They did punish him because they phased him out a bit in a couple of games. You're wondering, where is Mason? And Oli with his excuse, oh, he's not feeling well, put a hamstring, blah, 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 blah. What do you think about that? Okay, no, no surprises at all. Um, I just hope that Manchester United have someone in place at Manchester who can take care of Greenwood, who can give him good advice, you know, how not to react to the mm -hmm. stuff that we hear in social media yep. and pop the media itself. Because it's just down to take down young English players. And it's ironic because we should be trying to boost these young English players so mm -hmm. that English team right can thrive and finally win a World Cup since 66 you know mm -hmm, um again i just hope that there's someone other than Oli, maybe even rational i think he's maybe he's a bit too young but someone there who can take greenwood under the wing and just navigate the life of football with him because i think matter one. should because matter very, the players love they look up to matter he's, 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 he's very he's intelligent he's a role model he's a role model. Model. but i don't know if you know want to give him that task but i think he should take him mm -hmm. and just teach him live because yeah Presenting yourself as the individual, Matt actually does do a very good job about it. But what's our captain doing? Our so-called club captain? What's he doing for? Why is he even our captain? Harry. Harry. Why Harry. is he our captain? <laughs> Are we having someone that played less than a year for the club becoming the club captain or you know one season? I mean? That's like that says it all about our club. No, not not just the club. Only decision making. Nah, Oli, this is some of the reasons why me personally don't rate you. I ain't trying to chase no cloud over your head. Everyone that knows me know from the very get-go, I've said it. I'm not feeling this manager. I could put on anything. But if you're a good manager, your decision-making should have been good. And I just feel sorry. Let me just continue to the um, Greenwood topic. I feel sorry for Greenwood. Like you guys mentioned, we need that goal. No, role model should be something else because people i don't think this young generation look up to anyone that's role model these days because generation changes they got different mentality different mindset because they've been through the same thing in the media a whole lot of time like um, um he said um missing mount ain't been on the media but he should be in the media 24 7. he's the one that got family do you mean um oh uh, well the kid from man city phil folding, phil folding. That was Mr. MT. Phil Foden should have been the one on the media 24 7. He's the one that got family. He's the one that actually broke a promise to another female. He, they got a child together. So if you want to be hypocrite, talk about what we see in the media, we should be talking about Phil Foden saying that, like, oh, you're a cheater or you broke someone's heart. Because if he's been more so, whatever happened that day on the media, I promise you guys that she'll be sitting at home crying, burning, got tissue in um, Galaxy chocolate next to her. <laughs> <laughs> but the media ain't saying that though. Nah. But anything that comes up about Mason, you're going to hear it. Whatever happened to him in Bruno, that's the training, whatever. It shouldn't even make the media. One thing I think the media is going to say, is we still talk about an individual that's not even not how can I say I remember when we was in college we call us young adult I can't see him as a young adult he's still he's a teen a but I understand what people are saying he's not he's a teen 18. he's still a teen he's still a teen that's what I'm saying he's, and he's going to be 19, 19 and he's still a teen he's still a teen, still a teen. that's what I'm saying he's a young adult but he's still a teen that's what I'm trying to say mm -hmm. like 
let's I beg you lot please let's just learn not just missing but all the young these young young players young young people who've got around us like our younger sisters brothers just the young generation we should be able to educate these kids teach them more about life show them things that they could reflect on and say wow mm -hmm. i should change my actions like rather than just pointing fingers at them and make them feel bad for what they do because you feeling bad about what you do ain't gonna change nothing but when someone teaches you that you go do the right thing for what you done it makes you want to change your lifestyle it's to a young kid there's so many things that so many like i said the ex players what are they doing what are we what are they doing in terms of helping this youngster grow from being here they are right now something that will help them to the next stage because Mason is a brilliant player football wise he's one of the best Damn, mm -hmm. move man mm -hmm. jesus mm -hmm. I, i'm even afraid to jump into the next topic you're you're you're, you're in your season no, like, we, <laughs> no, we, we, we have to teach young generation stuff this I've might got, be a 50 million video guys i've got kids <laughs> I've got, I've got kids and I've got younger brother. So if you don't teach these kids, how are we going to help people? Are we... Damn, I'm calm down, calm down. Uh, Drink some water, like Jake's always said. <laughs> 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 so have to. That's a good point. No, no, a good point. That's a very good point, guys. I, I'm even afraid to go into the next topic, you know? We, we've all got siblings. He's got siblings, he's got yes, siblings. Yes, we do. So hopefully something good comes out of this. Mason, we love you. And I hope you change some of your ways. Go to training on time. Please. I hope Please. you do go to training on time. I hope it's that's a lie. It's not playing FIFA late. Yeah, I hope that's a lie too. Uh -huh. what, wait, wait. What's the press's business about this? Playing FIFA late. People, be, some of you guys that work in the press play games until 2 a.m. to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning to go to your work. What's this? What's nonsense? Is this? Some of you play Call of Duty until what? 3 o'clock in the morning? I start it. I'm up to one something playing FIFA sometime online. Matches. What's this about? Anyway, yeah, everyone straight to the FA president that's recently resigned for calling black people coloured. We're in 2020. This word in the UK does not exist. We don't, we don't, we don't refer us to each other as coloured people. So why are you? Why was the FA president doing that? He had to resign. He resigned because you know why. You know why he resigned because he would have because because what he said a lot of backlash would come to him. He resigned because. Certain things could have opened the door from the media, or they would have probably brought some stuff out of him so, just, just to get rid of him. True. And, and, and the fact that he used America as an excuse because in America they call black athletes or Latino athletes, athletes. colored people. But we don't do that here. <clears throat> We've never done that. That's just pure racism. And that just says a lot about what's going on in this in our own country, you know. If if the UK think that there is no we're not racist here, yes you are, yes you are, you are racist here. We, there's racism everywhere, and I've been a victim of it. He's been the victim of it. He's been the victim of it. You know, you know. I guarantee you, if we go up north, we'll probably see more of that compared to because we are in London. It's diverse, but we'll probably there's more racism as you go outside of London. Yeah, true. definitely true. Mm -hmm. Because majority of people that look like us, we're not a lot up north. You know. We're not really a lot up north, so it's we experience more outside of London. And with the FA president, you can go and suck a lemon. Go and suck a lemon for that, you know. <laughs> you know, and I hope you don't get no offense, you're probably a millionaire rich. I hope you don't get any more opportunities. You know, no offense, because I can't stand people who are racist. And I can't stand people that think it's acceptable to say racist words mm -hmm. and think it's just the norm. It's not the norm. It's never have been the norm. You know, and that's just, again another example of that racism does exist in this country and needs to be eradicated. And these guys that are in this system that are on top of the mm -hmm. the pyramid scheme of their organization, the mm -hmm. they need to get rid of. Mm -hmm. They need to get rid of. I, until I start seeing people like me, people like that look like you, people that look like Sadiq Khan, and people that look like um, Enrique Iglesias or whatever. People who look like um, Khabib or whoever, Arab people, then I can start saying that maybe these organizations are not that racist because they have a diversity at the top. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you guys, what do you think of that situation? Because we don't have that much time left. Just to add on that very quickly, you ended that very well. True. If the organization at the top doesn't reflect that of the footballers or the football fans or wider society, 
Mistakes like this will always happen. True. If in the boardroom there was five or six men from a black race, from an Asian race, through just socialising, do you think he would have said what he said? Mentioning coloured people instead of a black person and an Asian person. We need more diversity at the, at the top. Until that happens, unfortunately, incidents like this will continue to happen. So the FA, please employ more black and Asian people. If not, stuff like this will continue to happen, unfortunately. And I will quickly. The same thing. I can't just emphasize too much on this because you guys just said it all. But one thing I could say that I'm a little bit excited about is it's just me being hopeful. I hope that this could bring changes in the league itself, that the F within this the structure itself, that we could see more people our colour, like the Asian community, the Latin community and the black community, we can see more of these people actually participating mm -hmm. in the games. Like I mean the officials. That as well. That's one thing that I hope mm -hmm. this whole thing can change. Cause in the UK we don't really do that. You hardly see people like us or the Asians or the Lat people from the Latino community officiating big games. You don't see that. So I hope that changes. That's good. So guys, of course, we're going to wrap it up. Wrap up the show with um, your game of the week. My personally, oh, I know my life. Monday. Was it, was it, was it, well, you all know which <laughs> match was it, man. Jack Grealish to stress uh, people like Bellerin and El, El, El Messi, as they call him, El Nenny. Game of the week, Arsenal versus Aston Villa. Aston Villa spanking Arsenal at the Emirates Stadium, 3 0. My game of the week, and yours, Jags? Um, it was that, but my second game of the week would definitely be Palace versus Leeds. Oh, Eze scored a game. sweet game. free kick, top corner. Yes. He's looking promising. Yes. And Palace are having a great start to the season. What's going on, Leeds? I don't know. They are ops anyway, so I'm happy they also lost, you know? And I'm more game of the week for you. Come on, man. you got to be asked, no. Yes. <laughs> yes. you got to be asked, no. The, the, the video team. you sent me just made my day yesterday. I didn't even see it yesterday. Saka! Is this it? <laughs> you know the video you me on Instagram, the guy, the Tottenham fan dissing Saka, calling him some names and that. Oh, like, oh yeah, oh, you said you my expression. Ex yeah. The, uh, the Saka the bottle. The Saka bottle, <laughs> like, that just made that the water. day, the water bottle. Like, you should, you guys, if you know who the expression is, go watch that video. Shout I promise you, if you are Arsenal, anti Arsenal, trust me, make sure they're there, though. That's real talk. <laughs> but guys, we have come to the end of the show. We'd like to thank you for watching, as always, and we'll just back to the socials. And uh, Mook, where can we find you on the socials? As you always know, pray Flaco underscore sixteen on Instagram. Damn. And Jax, when can the people find you on Instagram or on the Snapchat or whatever you do? Instagram only, uh, Jax underscore United. Yes, guys, and of course, remember to subscribe as always. Smash that like button. Remember to share as well. And remember, you can find me on Instagram as well, which is over on the school spice, my personal Instagram. Same for Twitter and same for Snapchat. But do remember to follow the official Instagram account of Red United, which is Red United TV One, baby. And remember, guys, as always, keep it united. We'll see you next week for one, the international break thing. and discuss about England's matches. And one more yeah. thing. Thank you, guys, for making that um, 1K followers. Yes. We really appreciate that. We want to see more. We we love to do what you love, like, like, like seeing us do. We want to see, we just want to let you know that we appreciate that. I actually message him and say, thank you guys, man. We really appreciate that. It's the start of a new thing. Thank you guys. You're the winners. Definitely, guys. And also, remember to keep it red united. We're out, guys. Peace out. <laughs>